Special guest today for a summer life advice. It's Van Lathan. Hmm. What's up, Van? I am feeling great. I'm ready to dole out the wisdom, my friend. And the wisdom you will dole. Okay, uh, let's start with this one. I don't. I didn't mean to start with this one first. Uh, the headlines: four hundred pound embarrassment. My man is thick. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. And I know okay. what was your peak weight? What was the, the well, not peak weight, the highest weight? Because you wouldn't say that was your peak. Three seven zero. Holy shit. Three seven zero. No neck. Straight grimace. Everything sweated under the titties. Okay, during this time, I had to, um, I had to make sure that I used baby powder on the undercarriage area, or else the ass sweat swamp ass could take out an entire village. Okay, um, so yeah, it was a tough, it was a tough time in my life. Think about it. Think about being that size in Louisiana in August. It's tough, Ugh. tough stuff. Yeah. What age? What age, man? It's like, I think twenty five. Okay, you know, so my prime sex years. You're, you're, you're pushing the, you know what I mean? You're, 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 what you're, were you senior year in high school? Oh, senior year in high school, I was just fine. This was after What, what, what did you weigh? You're a big guy, but what did you weigh? I'm just trying to get a, a like a chart. Oh, here, probably visual. like senior year in high school, probably like 225, 230. I was, I was balling. Nice. I was playing ball. Nice. And okay. so like 6'4", about 225. And then it, I remember the second year, like I, I told this story on higher learning. When I knew I was getting too big, my grandfather took me to Piccadilly, Piccadilly cafeteria. And we go to Piccadilly Cafeteria. And this is like my sophomore year. I'm probably, at this point, sophomore year, I'm probably 295. I'm pushing three. And I remember he looked at me. He goes, because I had chicken and I had ribs and I had mashed potatoes and macaroni and cheese. And my grandfather says, hey, get your big ass up and go put some green on that plate. Do it now. <laughs> it, like, like, do it now. I went over there and I did it, but I just kept putting the weight on. It was really impressive. I got up to about 370. Hopefully. And then you added 70 pounds, 70 pounds after that speech. Man, you guys don't understand. Like, I would, I had a way to order the food. I would go order, I, I told you this before, I would go order, I would call somebody when I wanted to make a really big order and pretend like they were asking me to get them something to eat. So, <laughs> so I would be, I would be at Bennigan's. I'd be like, yo, could I have the uh, Bennigan's chicken tenders with the uh, the fries and the loaded baked potato? And then I'll get some, and then I'll get a call like, oh, okay, you want me to bring you something? What, you want the, uh, the, the, the chocolate ice cream and the chocolate cake? Okay, cool. It might, might melt by the time I get it home, just to let you know. I'm, I'm, I'm on the other side. All right, nice, cool. Yeah, and I get that <laughs> whole nine. I was just, I, I, I gained like 100 pounds after that and then, it went away. It stopped. Like I, like I had to, I had to like get control of my life. It's a real thing. Okay. So perfect. Mm -hmm. Cause, uh, unfortunately our emailer saying, uh, I write this to you today, discouraged and embarrassed little background. I'm 24, six, two currently sitting at four Oh eight. I've always been a big guy used to use it as an advantage, mean drop step, bully ball, home run and for average hitter lately. I've been gaining and gaining. I'm currently in my heaviest ever. I'm not looking for a sugar coat, but the cold, hard truth as to what I need to do to get back into shape or at least not make myself a joke. I'm married. I have a lot of friends, but no one will say to me what I need to hear. Hopefully is grow, uh, hopefully grow and wake up. Uh, I'm the outgoing friend to everyone. So I always say yes for food or beers at the pub. Shout out green sleeves. Can you guys just help me get through this? Uh, there's a picture of him. He's got a young, young kid here. Gorgeous wife, and he's 408. This person is me. All right. This guy is me. This is me. This is exactly what I was going through, except he's further than me because he's actually getting a woman to have sex with him. All right. So he, this, this is, this is me. I, yeah. Based I'm on a, this photo, they had sex once. Yeah. At yeah. They, they, at least once. Right. <laughs> um, so there's two things, and I'll, one of them I learned from the movie The Edge. Remember the movie with uh, yes. Alec Baldwin? Come on. Okay. So Alec Baldwin and Anthony Hopkins, they're in the woods, right? And he and Alec Baldwin and Anthony Hopkins says to Alec Baldwin, he goes, do you know what people die of when they're lost inside of the woods? And he go, and Alec Baldwin goes, no. He goes, like, they die of shame is what they die of. They don't die of, like, what's going on. They die of 
How did I get myself in this position? Why am I like this? I should have done this. I should have done that, right? And that's the first thing that you have to get rid of. You have to forget about whatever you went through, whatever you what laps you had that got you to this point. You cannot concentrate on that. It's a really messy room and you just got to keep picking up one thing. Like you just got to keep picking up one thing until you make a hole. That I got from my dad. My dad looked at my room one time. He's like, you don't want to clean this room up because you're looking around and you're seeing how cluttered this is and you don't think that this room can ever be clean. But he's like, everything that you do in life is about incremental progress. Like you really have to look at your life and just pick up one thing. You got to celebrate losing one pound. You got to celebrate losing two pounds. You have to know every day that you're getting better because you got a long road. And that's the only way that I lost the weight. The way that I lost the weight was just looking at myself and going, all right, this is just who I am for a little while. This is not going to change. However, I can have a life where I'm getting back on the basketball court, where I'm walking further, where I'm doing more. And you have to live in that spot for the next eight, nine, 12, 14 months. Give yourself some grace because it's going to be a long road. Just pick up one single thing and don't let the shame kill you because if it does, you'll turn around and you'll cope your way into 500, 550 pounds. It won't stop. You have to bring it back. Yeah, you would have a better perspective, but I would say as far as like the positives, he has a a young girl here, a young Mm -hmm. daughter that you're coming home to thinking like, I got to be around, all right? If you're by yourself, you don't even have that motivation. So draw something from that. Draw something from your wife. And as far as the working out part of it, you got to walk in the door, man. I mean, yeah. if you, if you don't, if you can't do it on your own, if just going for walks or buying a treadmill or fucking getting the Peloton, if nothing's working at home, there is something to motivational routine, at least for me, where I brought the notebook in, I walked into the gym, I was scrawny as fuck. I didn't know what I was doing. The guys that didn't know what they were doing were looking, laughing, snickering. Nobody's fucking talking to you. The trainers are being dicks. And I'd write down like, okay, 135 this many times. And then I was thinking, okay, in a month from now, what is that going to look like? And in the beginning, when you're working out, it's kind of the fucking best. So you have to get to this mental point of fuck people looking at me because I'm 400 plus pounds here because you're in there. And a lot of the other people that are in your situation are not in there. Um, and I, I, I think your analogies for there are so good. I don't want to spend too much more time on this because I don't have much more to add other than the mindset of like, once you get into that mental routine of expecting something and getting your fucking new sneakers and going like, hey, holy shit, and then getting to weigh yourself and seeing yourself down like six pounds for however long that takes, it's going to feel so fucking good. Yeah. But you have to keep checking in on it. You have to keep checking in on yourself going like, all right, as you said, this work isn't going to be done for a really long time. You are signing up for a long-term plan and you have to understand that. Yeah, and just to be real, like, take some joy in this. Like, it got to the point to where people noticed different things about me when I was losing weight. They noticed, it'd be like, oh, man, we got a, like, we, we're, we're having a, a a barbecue or a fish fry, whatever. I'd be like, nah, I can't do that. Can't do that. That's against it. Like, be a, be a, a dick about it. Like, be better than them. Like, be, like, the discipline that you're showing, once you get it down, other people will be envious of the fact that you have set these standards and these benchmarks and these lifestyle changes for your life. Because when, when you lose weight, you're going to find out that there's people out there that's been struggling to lose the same 10 pounds for like the last 10 years. Like, right. be the fucking badass for a little while. Nah, I'm not doing that. You know, you guys could do that. Like, I'm going to walk a little bit further. I'm going to go a little bit more. Like, push yourself. You're fucking Tom Cruise, bro. You got this, man. Go fucking get on the motorcycle and jump off the motherfucking building into a new body. I'm so excited for this guy. He's going to do it. So what'd you do about booze? This guy says he's a really big, he's he's into drinking with his buddies. That's a, that's a hard part when you're like doing everything right. Maybe you're eating right. Maybe you just burned a thousand calories at the gym. And then it's like five o'clock on a Friday and you're like, damn, I, what I'm used to doing is drinking these beers 120 calories at a time. And I like to have five or six of them. Like, did you just, did you stay away from all that until you were like ready to go to parties again? Or did you, did you just switch it up and do like vodka sodas or something? I mean, you can do that, but just drink them. 
But just know that if you drink them on Friday, you can't drink them on Saturday. Yeah. yeah. And just, you know what I mean? just, just drink them. Drink them. Hey, bro, you really feel like you have to have it? Like, I went cold turkey. I was like, I was drinking Diet Coke to like the point to where I remember it took me about nine months to lose the weight. I was drinking Diet Coke the whole time, which you probably shouldn't be drinking that too. And I remember like I had a regular Coke after I had lost the weight that September and I almost bust a nut. I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is this? I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, I can I cannot believe this. So I went cold turkey. But if you don't want to do that, drink the beer. Have a good time. Just know you got to get back to it. It's like anything else in life. I believe in this dude, man. Reach out to DM me. DM me. I'm going to I'll be your accountability coach because I'm coming back down, too. So DM me, bro. Like, I think you're going to do it. He has the right he has the right outlook to, to make a long term change. I add one little warning to that though. You don't want to say no to everything because then it's no, like, hey, no. what's up with what's up with Skinny Van? And be like, nobody fucks him anymore. He doesn't have any friends. <laughs> hey, but you know what? You know what happened though? Like they stopped. They stopped fucking with me. It. it re I really became like a loner. I became like a loner. They stopped fucking with me. I became the guy that's like at the gym when everybody's playing, like three on three, and I was like running suicides. I became the hey, do you want to? Hey, you want to run real quick? Nah, I'm over here doing calisthenics. I became that guy. And I like that. I like the gym being like a church. I like saying no. That's kind of like the, the discipline in my life that I had to learn to be successful at other things. Last thing I'll say on this, because I could talk about this like for an hour. I would not be successful in anything at life had I not pushed myself to lose that weight. I would have, I'd still be in Baton Rouge right now I'd still, none of, none of this would have worked had I say, you know what, I'm going to change my life and, and, and make it a point to become a healthy person and say no to some stuff. Serious. And now my man is posting boxing videos of busting up dudes' noses. Yeah. That guy's a good boxer. But it, it, it was, a, it was just at that point, he was, he's out of his weight class. That guy's a good boxer. Though. He's a good boxer. Shout out to Brendan. Just saying, I don't know how thrilled I would have been if I was the other guy with a busted nose and fans like, hey, you guys see me working out lately? Oh, it just happens to be this dude's nose got busted up. He, he was cool with you posting hey, it. Hey, I was, he was. I was pissed about it on his behalf. So as long do, as you're telling me he was cool. He was cool. But do you know why I can post that? I've posted me getting my mouthpiece knocked out at the gym. That's I've true. I've posted me being concussed. I post more shit of me getting fucked up in the gym boxing than I do of the other stuff. Because it's so funny. I'm bigger than everybody. And they be busting my motherfucking ass. And it's just funny to get beat up by a guy who's 155 pounds, 170 pounds, when you're 270 pounds. I look back at the videos. I'm like, <laughs> look how big I am. And there's nothing I can do. So I always post those videos. So let me get a W every now and again, man. You're right. You were, you were very good. You're very good. But I still think anybody posting the boxing videos deep down is kind of like, yeah, I'll fuck you up. <laughs> this is why I post it. Even if they're losing, it's like, yeah, but he's actually really in there training and going through the cardio alone of keeping your arms up that long and moving around while somebody's trying to punch you in the face. Uh, it's good stuff. All right, next one. Next one. We won't go as long on all of these. I'm, I'm in fear that my friend has become victim of a pyramid scheme. <laughs> 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 All right. Big fan of the pod. Six one one ninety five. Twenty one years old. Max bench. One thirty five. Hey, just like we were talking about my journal. There you Early go. 20s. Yeah. Uh, player comp. Duncan Robinson with significantly less mobility off screens. Oh, you mean not the best off ball cutter in the NBA? OK. <laughs> one of the core guys in my friend group has recently become an insurance seller, not salesman. I like how he says insurance seller. Mm. However, I feel that this is likely a Ponzi scheme. He recently quit his job at Panera and dropped out of school for this opportunity. <laughs> okay. Sorry, guys. I will not be here to make the Frontiga grill, <laughs> Panera, whatever those are. They're pretty good. I hesitated at first to believe he was being serious when the initial feelers were thrown out, but turns out he's being legit. After a few weeks of him doing the training, he started his career in selling insurance within the friend group. When it was my turn to have the life insurance meeting, he asked me for a list of contacts and stated that it would be for the people who would receive my benefits if I were to die in an accident. Usually that's not a long list. Yeah, this isn't a one or two. Right, right. 
I gave him a list of about six names that included contact information for the people, not knowing he was really using this as a referral list. <laughs> so basically the training was get them to give you six to eight contacts and pitch it as emergency contacts or the beneficiaries, which again, doesn't really make a ton of sense. Um, but anyway, you guys are all 21. I wouldn't have known. I'd be like, yeah, you pitch. Here's a cell, I think. Oh, I think that's a landline. Okay. All right. Um, so fast forward after the meeting, he sends me a script to send to the people who were on the referral list. I will attach a screenshot of what the script says. Um, here's what the script says. You're going to get a call from a guy named, we'll leave his name out, about benefits. He will explain everything. Just pick up when he calls and be nice to him. He's always booked and sees a lot of people. If you call him first, he's more likely to take care of you. So text him or call him when you get a chance. Dude, do you think is the title of this my friend is part of a pyramid scheme or I well, may be I part, am part of, of yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, like I'm enabling somebody to be <laughs> right. part of a pyramid scheme. What the fuck? So uh, the email continues. After he sends a script, I don't follow through and tell anyone that he's going to contact them, thinking no one will answer. Sadly, I was mistaken. He calls my cousin, asking to set up a meeting on Wednesday at 9. Following the interaction, my cousin immediately calls me concerned about what I'd gotten him into. With that being said, do I dare intervene early and tell him not to call the other people on the list? Or do I allow this to run its course and risk him finding out that I didn't read the script to anyone on why he could be calling them? I want to tell him that this newfound dream of selling insurance for the small company seems like it's not legit and a waste of his time, but I don't know how to let him down easily. Um, P.S. He's roped in some of the other core guys already that have given him 50 plus dollars a month for life insurance. So I'm afraid I'm alone in this situation when it comes to not falling for his gimmick. You guys are very, very, I don't know, if gullible. And You're nice fucking to each other? nice. You're just yeah. Not, like, this is the nicest yeah. group of people ever. Uh, look, of course you don't want to be giving relatives contacts to this guy under the guise that you thought it was emergency contacts, beneficiaries, when in fact, they're just other leads. You're helping this guy get the Glenn Gary leads here, man. You can't be doing that. And for you to even ask us like, hey, should I get in front of this or let it run its course because you're afraid of being exposed of not reading his fucking calling card <laughs> scheme script. <laughs> You're the nicest fucking guy that's ever emailed the show. Right. Fuck off. To, I mean, Van, I can't even imagine how far this would take. What would you get? 10 seconds within your friend group? Oh, before? it's not going to get five seconds. First of all, this guy is already one of these dudes' lieutenants. He doesn't even know it. He's he's already one of these guys. He, there's, there's a name. His friend's name is on a whiteboard, and there's a line <laughs> down with the guy who just emailed in underneath it. Um, I, I don't know. Like, it, you know, I... I come from a community where people do this kind of stuff all the time. These looms, <laughs> like trying to sell Primerica and stuff like that. And I, every time somebody hits me up, I go, "Yo, are you an asshole? <laughs> are you a, are you scum? Like, because there's a choice that you're making right now. Are you scum? You want me to try to get all of my family wrapped into your Primerica insurance racket? Are you scum? No, like, not nah, get out of it now. I will say this though: there's a fear here. This guy is so dedicated. To indoctrinating people that I wonder if this is actually the safest thing for him to be doing. Because if he doesn't get the insurance gig going, does he start the next Nexium cult? Or, or you know what I'm saying? Does he <laughs> All do you need something? is a bank account, bro. If you got a bank account or a Venmo, like, I could triple your shit. <laughs> it's that guy right there. I always wonder how do you steer that guy in the right direction because he's just too <laughs> dedicated to scamming and you want him to find something that works for him. I don't know. We might have to get him a podcast or something because for me, I, the way I look at it is, no, you have to. The most important thing is stop being involved. Stop being an accomplice to whatever's going on. Fuck whatever he does. But you say, hey, man, I'm washing my hands of it. I can't do it. The problem with all of these schemes is there always seems to be like one guy in the town where it's working out for him. Yeah. You know, Without a that's doubt. That's the thing is like, there's that guy in the town. He'd be like, that guy just bought a new Camaro or he'd be like, do you know that they went to the Poconos? You know, that, so it's, it's big in the timeshare community. Yeah, right. <laughs> there's always so, one guy that it works for. Maybe he's a plant. I don't know. So I actually, when back in the day, when I was, uh, when I was unemployed here in LA, I actually went unwittingly to like a Primerica thing. Right. And a guy from Baton Rouge that I grew up with, a really great athlete. He's like a god in the Primerica insurance world. And I remember saying, I remember saying, 
yeah, you know, my friend Blankety Blank, uh, he does that. I remember the dude going, you know Blankety Blank? I swear on my dad this happened. And I'm like, uh, yeah. Ryan Paraloo? <laughs> no, not Ryan Paraloo. <laughs> God, play. This is a, a great family, great person, but he's made a lot of money selling primary American insurance. He's like, you know, it's like, yeah, I used to, I used to play ball with him. Why? He's like, oh my God. Can you introduce me to them? Can you, can you, can you, like, li- listen, we'll, we'll cut your rates. We'll give you all of this stuff. And I'm like, yo, I got to get the fuck out of here. This is like a fucking <laughs> cult of people selling insurance. You don't want, you don't want to get involved with it. Just tell your friend and, and get the fuck away from it, man. It's like the people are being hurt out here. It's a, it's a depressed economy, man. I had one uh, of my buddies, I had one of my buddies, but I think it was either late college or right out of college, you know, he rounds up group text and is like, hey, I got like a business opportunity. I want you guys to come over and, and hear this thing out. And like, none of us really had things figured out. You know, we didn't have jobs yet. So we were like, all right, you know, whatever, we'll just go over to our buddy's house and do it. And it was like some sort of timeshare pyramid scheme thing. And honestly, we didn't even have a conversation about it. All of us were like, this is stupid. We're not going to do this. But that guy just got like excommunicated by the group, like right away. No, no, no one really talks to that guy anymore. <laughs> And I mean, that's kind of what you got to do here. Like, I, I, I don't want to be friends with that guy. You definitely have to tell him to not hit up the people that you gave him on the list, though, right? You just got to give those people a heads up because that's a dick move. If you just leave them hanging out to dry. He's already roped a couple of your friends into giving them 50 bucks a month. Like, you don't want your family members and people that you actually really care about to be roped into this, too. So I think you absolutely have to tell them to lay off. I love arguments where I have all the winning points. I get excited. <laughs> Like I get to go argue with this motherfucker and he doesn't have one decent position, not one. Mm. And you have them all. You just go to him and be like, you told me it was this. It's not this. These are my relatives. I'm getting calls, but I don't think you're built like that. I don't think the email, the, the emailer is suggesting, could he potentially catch some shit for not reading this script to everybody else? So look, I fell for the money pyramid thing. A month into my college career, I was on campus, older guys of fraternity calling us recklessly. We're all pledges being like, hey, whatever. And there was also like a pledge dynamic to it that didn't make it great. Uh, older dude picks me up in his sick fucking Toyota 4Runner. Oh, fall 93. Oh, man. I mean, you know, go to the ATM, oh. right? Boom, 100 bucks. And then I then I learned the lesson. I learned a hundred dollar lesson. I learned a value much more valuable than the hundred dollars. I learned the lesson that day. I'm calling. Then I had the older guy in the pyramid that I was in telling me, like, do you know any guys at St. Mike's? I'm calling hockey players at St. Mike's that were older than me, being like, wait, mm. what do you want us to do? Be like, no, no, this guy, the one guy's he just went to North Face and he got like two new jackets. Like he's up twelve hundred already, <laughs> you know? And I <laughs> It all came together, and then I realized, I'm like, oh, this whole thing's fucking stupid because part of the pitch was everybody gets their money back if it crumbles. Is, like, is, this, is, it, is it possible that this guy who's running the scheme is the, like, unimpeachable alpha of his crew? Cause isn't this the only framework in which this makes sense? He's got yeah, to be the... Gotta be. He, yeah, he's got to be the guy that everybody else is like... It, fucking looking up to or something because if can not, you be the alpha if you work part-time at Panera it depends on the crew but you definitely can well my homeboy okay, Ian w- worked at Radio Shack and he was the man like I'm just saying? at 21 yeah possible 30 yeah he's not going to be the alpha he's not going to be the alpha yeah right. yeah yeah cut cut it Cut him off. Cut him off. Like just, that's crazy. This would have been two years of mean jokes off, out of the gate just for suggesting such a thing. We were like, oh, there's a bridge over there. I think get you a good rate on it. That's repent. Like it's just uh, it's crazy. Tell your friend to be a man and sell drugs, like <laughs> like like an like a real American, like an criminal. adult. <laughs> yeah, do yeah, something tell, tangible. Yeah, do do something that people can at least enjoy. <laughs> tell this guy to start selling oxy or something like that, like a real American, or both. To, they kind of, I don't know. Same thing. Yeah. All right. All right. So here we go. Uh, I have a happy Gilmore relationship with Pickleball. Hey, Ryan and the boys, 30 years old, 5'9", 175, athletic build. My basketball comp is a short fill up, uh, short Filipino version of James Posey. Glue guy. Another glue guy here. All right. I was a catcher throughout high school and in college before joining the military. Throughout my time in active duty between deployments, I continued to stay active between playing baseball in a wooden bat league uh, to bodybuilding shows and marathons toward the end. Okay. Last year, I got out of the military, moved back to Florida to take care of my mom and a company with a huge list of injuries to where I had knee surgery. Uh, I had to go to physical therapy three times a week. I was still playing baseball before I got introduced to the craze of pickleball. 
Oh, wow. I've been playing for five months and got good extremely fast compared to all my friends, too, uh, where I would go to tournaments and play against a few players that are pro and hold my own. Hmm. Uh, I've been recently advised by a pro player and a few of my friends to hire a coach and join a team to potentially go pro. My internal problems are I still love baseball and to run marathons way more than pickleball, despite my injuries and my inferior skill level compared to pickleball. Additionally, most of my higher tiered players, uh, to put it politely, are way too arrogant considering our sport or just plain out weird. And it doesn't even come close to the brotherhood I had in the clubhouse or dugout. Although nothing in life is guaranteed, if I dedicated my time to pickleball, I'm confident I could go pro. And this could be a chance to fill my competitive void since being out of the military and certainly not good enough to be at the next level of baseball. I love playing the actual game of pickleball, but should I accept this next chapter of my life and pursue it and hope the community players get better over time? Or do I continue to play baseball and run like an average Joe? Thank you for all that you do. Um, okay. Not the worst dilemma we've ever had. So that's, that's a starting point there. Yeah. The hesitation seems to be with the pickleball community. Um, yeah. I, there, there'd be two things that I would ask you before we get to that. Who are the pros that you're playing against in pickleball? Like, I imagine there's websites for this. You can see where dudes are ranked and all that kind of different stuff to get a vague idea. Are you playing against them or are you playing against a pro pickleball player who really isn't any different than like just people that are, that are good at it? Uh, mm. You know what I mean? Like, what does it mean? What is yeah. turning pro actually? When you fucking say mean? a pro at pickleball, are you talking about a renowned pickleballer or the highest level of pickleball in your community? Is basically right, like the saying. club pro, the pro like, club pro pickleball person. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and this isn't a dump on anybody at the highest ends of of pickleball success, but my guess would be, even if you were the rare example of somebody who's just so naturally gifted in the sport and you figured it out with your athletic background and the competitive edge of somebody who used to serve in the military, say you're the 50th best pickleball player in the world. What does that mean? Can we get research on that real quick? Like, I'm, look, I'm looking at some of the best pickleball players in the world right now. You got uh, Noah Rubin, Sam Quarry. I've heard of him. Uh, Hurricane Tyra Black on the women's side is, is, is one of them. Um, like Barry Waddle, all of these players. Is he talking about that he's on the level of a Barry Waddle? I don't think if, he is. I don't think he, he may. I just wonder are people telling him, like my father's 6'5", right? Played a little college hoops. During his, uh, his, I guess I'll just call him hippie days. But he wasn't like crazy, whatever. He was like, you know, work work with his hands, humble carpenter. And he'd play in these pickup basketball games in northern Vermont. Right. And they couldn't believe he wasn't on the Celtics. Like, right. they were like, what do you mean you're not an NBA player? Like, they couldn't. And he's just fucking destroying everybody because mm -hmm. he was big and he could shoot. He could do this stuff. But he was playing pickup games like practically in the fucking Northeast Kingdom, which if you want to research in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont, feel free. Give yourself about an hour. Great name. So, yeah, he and then, of course, if you go back down to Hartford, it was completely different. He was a good player. No one was wondering why he wasn't in the NBA. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Yeah. So that's what I'm wondering if this is happening here. Now, granted, he's in Florida, so we're not talking about pickleball in Arkansas, which I imagine it's better in Florida. Um, and it seems like the vibes are just off collectively. I, did you guys know this about the pickleball community? I know that they got some beef with basketball because there's, you know, there's a got, debate over who should get the indoor space. I they got with beef with everybody. Players, tennis, but. too. Aren't they taking, they're taking over tennis yeah. courts. I don't oh, know. Yeah. Pickleball. They took over the tennis court in my park back home. They, nobody's happy. That's a big beef here in L.A. is the beef between the pickleballers and the tennis players. And it is acrimonious with how much the tennis players hate the pickleballers. They can't stand them. It's a big deal. I'm going to be honest. I'm not. I'm not in the t the pickleball arena. I don't really understand what goes into it, but I'm kind of like a grow up and just play tennis. Like, what happened? Why is tennis so bad? And I feel like pickleball because it's, like it's easier. Easier. Is this everybody? But like everybody sport. that I but, talk to that loves it talks about, oh, I was hurt forever. And it's like, but it's like, okay, so now you're good at this. 
it kind of feels like the new vegan thing, though, or like everybody who's big into pickleball just wants to tell you how big into pickleball they are. And I just don't care. Um, so I think that maybe that's Whoa. it, too, because it's I, unwatchable I, on television. It's I, yeah, it's, it's 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 crazy bad. I'll tell you something about this guy, though, is he seems like a challenge addict. Yeah, there you go, Van. He seems like a challenge addict, right? This guy served his country. He was a Marine, he said. You made that up, but sounds good. <laughs> oh, no, he did. <laughs> oh, he, well, no, he's not a Marine. Uh, so, but look. For so the story, he, it checks out. He does things that are hard. He plays a hard sport, does hard things, and he seems like he's in it for the challenge. And pickleball comes very easy to him, and he's around a bunch of people that are doing this easy, leisurely sport, and he's not quite getting the same feel from it, even though he could be dominant in it. He's going to be a sort of laissez-faire pickleball master, and he's going to be great, but he's not going to get the the same uh, adrenaline rush that he gets from playing baseball. Having said that, I go where I can dominate. So if you crushing it in pickleball, and they can't fuck with you in pickleball, Brother, go forth and see what you can, where you can take your pickleball skills. The game might be, yeah. you might be a Ben Johns or a Tyler McGuffin or a Frank <laughs> Anthony Davis one day. You never know. You need to, you need to go Dream big. and figure it out. Yeah. Yeah. Listen to the sponsors for pickleball. Listen to the Team USA pickleball sp sponsors. Well, not Team USA, but USA pickleball. Consumer Cellular, they're everywhere. Franklin, Skechers. Uh, the Penguin shirts, they make great button-down shirts. I mean, this could be in your future. You might Is get there some home of that, base in Manhattan Beach? You might get some of that Zeus <laughs> insoles money. Sports lighting. I don't know. There's just a hotel planner. Rhea yeah, Iwer. but for every B. Waddle, man, Sport there's court? an Albrecht Meyer, you know? <laughs> so if you're an Albrecht Meyer, do any of you guys know who he is? Of course you don't. No, I don't. Probably the greatest oboe player in the world. It's fucking cool, mm. but... But you're telling me this guy has a chance to be a Steve Deacon <laughs> and he's not going to take end? it? And you're like, not going to take that mean, opportunity? Yeah, You're not going to take that opportunity? Ends. Why? By the way, the why can't you just still play baseball once a week? <laughs> yeah, you can still That's go out point. there. Like, like, you can still go out there and Can you imagine? Shorts. This would be like the worst Disney Plus movie fucking ever where <laughs> the kid's on the bench Well, he's 30, maybe Navy, and he's like, I just, I just love, I love the pastime. I love America's pastime. And then the coach is like, you've been given a gift. You've been given a gift. <laughs> You're going to be in Des Moines at that tournament for pickleball on Saturday. <laughs> if I had it like you, if I had 1% of your God-given ability, I wouldn't be throwing it away. And it's like Denzel Washington talking to some young white kid. He's like, I broke my rotator cuff. I had Tommy John surgery. I could never Disney pick Plus? again. Yeah, Denzel, Denzel, you could get, uh, probably not Denzel. Probably Keith David. Or we something. just signed with Dada. <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. oh, my God. Um, all right. The uh, salaries, the salaries are all over the place. I'm trying to look up like how much a pro pick. I'm sure there's a makes. few guys that are fucking killing it. Well, there's, according there's, to the pickleballunion.com, uh, pro pickleballers can make between 50 and 200K a year. Okay. All right. Could be doing worse <laughs> things. That's is there a bad. rule? Is there a yeah. rule where they can't play recreational baseball once a week? <laughs> right. I don't <laughs> think they could do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Sure Frank Anthony Davis is in, a, is in a hoops league somewhere. He looks pretty. All right. Yeah, this so. is uh, this is one on on buying tools. I love this one. I fucking love it. All right. Uh, don't say my last name. By the way, I couldn't say your last name if I had a week <laughs> and babble. All right. Uh, which I do have, by the way. Anyway, greetings from Sweden. I hope that Kyle's having a good visit in Sweden. Uh, by the time you hear this, Kyle may be in Sweden. I'll either will or will have not gone. So. Yeah, we'll connect you guys non saruti style. It's true that we like Americans and usually ask a lot of questions. 6'5", 220, not great in the gym, but I love basketball. Basketball style is Boris Diaw, uh -huh. but with a better attitude towards American women. Hey, I like what he did there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, he saved the Boris Diaw comp that's getting overused by going back to an old Boris Diaw comment about American women, which wouldn't play all that well today. 
Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, I have a question for Ryan regarding purchasing tools and knowing Ryan's resume and construction. I thought it would be a good idea to ask him a ruling on this. I'm currently 24 years old and I'm doing more and more work by myself in that department. Recently, I discovered that I could really use a spirit level. Um, that's a name, you know, just, just let's just say level. All right. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it's a really underrated tool. I agree with you. My girlfriend recently needed help putting up some shelves, and I insisted that we needed to use a spirit level. Uh, when I presented this idea, I was questioning why that would ever be needed. Either way, I'm looking to buy one. <laughs> this guy's fucking buying the level. He doesn't care. <laughs> and I can't decide if I should buy a cheaper option or a more expensive one like the one my dad used growing up. It had a smaller display that showed accurate tilt, and it also had a feature that sounded when it was exactly straight. Obviously, you got to go with that one. But yeah. the cheaper ones just have the simple bubble showing how straight the spirit level is at the moment. The cheaper ones usually cost 250 kroner. That's 25 US dollars or uh, 1300 kroner. And that's about 130. So just divide it by 10 if you're in Sweden, Kyle. Just help me out. I would really appreciate a ruling from Ryan here, given his experience in construction. Is it worth buying the more expensive one? Okay. First of all, I would always buy the more expensive one um, because I just would. Now, if you're telling me this thing makes a sound when it goes off, that's fucking cool. But I'll tell you, you get good with a level. You don't need that stuff. All right. You don't need that Mm. stuff. You can just see it when it's plumb, when it's plumb. You look in there. Some of us, you're around the construction site long enough. I can walk in a room and go, that sills (laughs) off. It's one of my favorite things I can do. You can, can just, eyeball the work. Oh, I can I can tell. I can I can hang a picture and I can go, that's off. Nope. Wow. My father and I, my father and I have competitions to see who who's who's more just naturally gifted when it comes to just seeing level. And then if something's off, he'll be like, Well, that's because the trim works fucking wrong. And then we'll check the trim <laughs> and he'll be like, you know, he's gotten me a few times on that one where I'll be like, No, the picture's off here. And he'd be like, No, it's because you're reading it off the trim. You're fucking wrong. The trim's wrong. And then it's just like a whole nother level, like this new boss that pops out of somewhere. You're like, I don't know how to go up against this. So, you know, iron iron sharpens iron. Um, the more expensive one I imagine is probably more heavy duty, even with those extra features. I'm telling you with a level, I don't think if you need it, to be honest with you, although it's fucking cool as hell. A level around the house makes sense. It's nice about to with have a laser. One. This one's got a laser. Yeah, I mean that's a whole nother sick. That's a whole nother level. But there's just a lesson here about tools. Okay. When I got my first house in humble West Hartford, Connecticut, this motherfucker went and bought every DeWalt thing you could possibly imagine. I was looking at fucking chop saws. Why? I don't know. The house was kind of new. I wasn't going to be doing anything. I could do some ceiling work. Um, I was never good enough to be a finished carpenter. I don't know that I had the touch or patience for it. I wasn't actually trained to be a finished guy. Uh, I don't know that that's entirely shocking, but I still wanted a fucking sick chop saw. And what one finished carpenter did teach me once, he was like, if you're cutting at a certain angle and you measure it out of the angle, leave it thick by like a 16th, leave it six where it's going to, where it's going to meet the next piece of wood leave it a little on the thicker side. And I was like, why is that? And then he toes everything in and it keeps that seam perfect, keeps it fucking perfect because it's a little extra material on both sides. So it's just a, tr- that's just a trim lesson out of nowhere for you. So my father comes to visit and he sees a sawzall that's never been open, circular saw that's never been open. Um, there was like an extra battery pack thing that was never open. And he was like, oh, you're doing some work around the house, are you? <laughs> two two or three est wings i had a smaller hammer i had a framing hammer he's like why do you have a fucking framing hammer you're on tv you're never you have the waffle est wing like give me a fucking break but i wanted it all i wanted it bad i have now moved that shit five different times and i've not used any of it mm. ever by yeah. a drill by a level but for the most part the rest of us are going to be fine Without those things. What about a mallet? You like having yeah, a mallet? Yeah, about to say, like a hammer. Like a, you need a hammer. Uh, you need a hammer. You don't need yeah. a finish hammer, a roofing hammer, and then a fucking framing hammer if you're me. Mm. But I got him. I got him. What about a mallet? I got a mallet. Come on. A rubber yeah. mallet. You should have a mallet. Yeah, rubber that. mallets. Clutch. Never buy cheap cheese, tools, or guns. That's a Latham family rule. Cheap cheese, ruin a whole meal. Cheap tools, cheap tools ruin the job cheap guns in your life all you guys out there trying to defend yourselves with high points you're gonna die okay so what i'm saying is cheap cheese tools or guns never buy them cheap always spend a little bit more if you have to 
It's a fact. Simple Southern wisdom. I, I'm all about the level. I'm all about the upgrades and all that stuff. But there's something to learn the bubble, which isn't that hard at mm. all. It's not that big of a deal. Honestly, like I, I've used some of the electronic stuff like the stud finders and all that shit. And then I, I go up against like just, you know, the old knuckle tap ear to the drywall. And then I'll look at the stud finder. I'm like the fucking stud finder. This electric thing's off. Like I trust the knuckle in my ear better. Mm. So I, uh, I just bought a reciprocating saw and oh look out <laughs> wow. yeah because i was trying to cut some wood you know you just, you just need you need a tool that can cut things like because i'm not going to get a hacksaw out and start doing it myself so i bought that and honestly it's awesome it's incredible i didn't buy like the super expensive one i thought i bought like a mid-grade model i do feel like Did i you do go feel with like cobalt or something i do feel like with a level though i mean yeah, as you said ryan it's pretty straightforward like i don't think you need a sounder the sounder thing seems dumb to me a laser kyle brought the laser that does seem cool because if you're hanging pictures right you can just do the laser across the whole wall you can put the the, the tax in and then like you do one stop shop and cut your time probably in half so i would recommend that but i don't think the sound thing makes any sense but i usually i usually buy the middle grade sort of don't buy the cheapest thing buy the one in the middle don't buy the most expensive one because unless again unless it's your job to do this I don't think you're going to need all the expensive features that the expensive ones bring. Did he mention that this was for his girlfriend's apartment that he was doing stuff for? I think it, I think they're a unit at this point. I think he said they're a unit at some shows. Yeah. So think about what is it that does. what they call relationships in Sweden? Yeah, like <laughs> a unit. Yeah, they're a unit. Think about what it does to her when he pulls out a level with a goddamn laser on it. You know what I'm saying? Now she doesn't talking. know. She doesn't know about the bubble. You know, he pulls out a laser and her. I think about what it does to her. That's probably what he's thinking about. Do I, where can this Bob Vila in this house situation go after I pull out the level with the laser? You know what I mean? They might be laying horizontal (laughs) (laughs) a little bit after that. You never know. There's some real man testosterone shit going on here. I think we're off a few degrees. (laughs) 40 American on Amazon. I'm just I am. Um, (laughs) <laughs> a lot of the higher end construction stuff that most of us shouldn't buy for the most part also has to live on a construction site day to day. So like you could be paying for stuff where the level is protected against falling off the back of a truck all the time, falling off staging, falling off a roof, falling onto bricks, you know, all these different things where it's like, there's a pretty good chance you're putting up some shelves. You don't need necessarily that durability. I'm not one to tell you to not do it. Okay. Because I've done it every single time. I'm like, wait, carbon carbon filtered or no i shouldn't even carbon fiber edges I'm like fuck yeah i need that i don't even think i've taken the wrapper off some of this shit uh last one last one okay five seven one fifty seven max two forty five pre sciatica two forty five it's a strong motherfucker yeah if he's weighs one fifty seven and he say and that that's what he's putting up in the gym that's a strong. That's a strong son of a bitch. Probably go. pretty good at pickleball. Yeah. <laughs> Player cop is Kobe immediately tearing his Achilles. <laughs> He's from LA, so I guess he can make that joke. Shout out to the frolic room. I've All been right. living in a redacted European capital for nearly a decade. He won't even fucking tell us the city. Okay. <laughs> right. He just he just writes in redacted. He's been there a decade. About 70 years ago, I met my wife. He's from here. She's smart, beautiful. Everyone jokes I outkick the coverage. I don't disagree with him. She's bisexual. And a few years ago, she randomly brought up that we can have an open relationship, but with only with women for both of us. Guys are fucking booking. They're looking on their flight apps. Right yeah. after redacted. <laughs> so like, what airport code is redacted? Um <laughs> Only women for both of them. I'm all for it. But if I'm being honest, I'm not that type of guy. Neither of us has used it up until this point. This guy is fucking. I, I, I want to say so many things. Go ahead and finish it. Van, <laughs> I know my father was like, who is that type of guy? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fast forward to a few months ago and we reconnected with a girl. Let's call her Sarah. We've known Sarah for a while, but don't see her very often. She's gorgeous and overall great hang. Both my wife and I are attracted to her. We've discussed her as a possible partner, something my wife and I aren't unfamiliar with. You're up, man. All caps. (laughs) (laughs) It just so happens that I've been hanging out with Sarah a lot as she's kind of joined the core group recently. Fast forward a few weekends ago when my wife had just left for a month-long backpacking trip and I just had to hang back for work. 
It was the pride parade here. And I ended up hanging out with Sarah and a few others. The booze and some illegal substances were flowing. And before I knew it, Sarah, my homosexual friend, another girl, and myself end up at a sex club at 4 a.m. For reference, this is a very gay-friendly city with plenty of gay sex clubs near. But this was a straight sex club, which is harder to come by. It was about a 35-minute Uber from where we were. Great details. Hmm. Thank you for educating all of us. I'm usually not the type of guy to end up at a place like this. Boy, I got to tell you, you fucking hang in the fringes of it, though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, you're, you're, not, you're, like, you're fucking, you like, you like to just be around it, but that's not your thing. You're kind of a weirdo. You know? I like heroin, but not needles. Right, right. I live in South Beach. I buy a ton of Coke. I just, it's not really me. It's not my thing. You know what I mean? Yeah, transferable skills you've got. There you go. <laughs> I love that he was like, I'm not. Okay. Uh, so anyway, not that type of guy usually, but Sarah would not take no for an answer. Now, Sarah has recently got out of a long-term relationship and she's openly said how she's now only into girls. The other girl with us had basically the same story and I could tell they were into each other. I told her the main reason why I didn't want to go is because I knew that it was going to end up with the two girls would hook up while my buddy and I just chilled. But Sarah kept saying it wasn't going to go down like that and bringing up the fact that I'm in an open relationship and you never know what's going to happen. She insisted that I come. Hmm. Ah. Hey. Phrasing. Nice. I was convinced. We ended up uh, there. And before you know it, the four of us are in our towels. My buddy and I and the other girl leave to go grab us some drinks. I go right in for the kiss. At first, she said, no, we aren't friends. And she couldn't. All right. The structure of that sentence needs some cleaning up. I go in right for the kiss. And then he, the at first comma, she said, no comma, we are friends and she couldn't. So actually that's pretty much it. So we didn't need the commas in there. I went in for the kiss. She said, no, mm. I was stunned. <laughs> Full stop. There's no way I misread the signs, but I was respectful and backed off. Five seconds later, she says, fuck it. We were making out for a few minutes before the <laughs> others returned. That's why the commas. I redact my earlier at first statement. Yeah. Right. Right. It just could have been worded a little bit better. Uh, that's about as far as it went though. Made out for a few minutes before the others returned. It was a bit awkward when the others returned and within minutes, Sarah and the other girl began to go at it. My buddy and I made our rounds to leave them in a bit of peace, at least as much peace as a couple can have in a sex club. However, I couldn't get it out of my head what had just happened. It's possible I misread the situation, but I really don't think I did. It's not like when she was trying to convince me, she was saying, you never know, you might end up with, or maybe you'll meet somebody there. If I heard something along those lines, I really feel like I would have made the executive decision not to go, right? Her suggesting these are reasons why you should go. Maybe you'll meet somebody, whatever, deflecting knowing that she's going to be pawning you off a little bit later. Uh, we ended up staying until they kicked us out around seven. Where the fuck is this place? Grabbed an Uber together and went our separate ways. It was a bit awkward in the car. And since then, it feels like it has ballooned even more. Sarah and I were getting close before all this happened, but we haven't spoken since. I'm going to see her in about a week or two, and I really don't know how to approach the situation. Do we play it off and not try to make it a big deal? Or do I clear the air with her when we get a moment alone? Love the show. Hope you, Sarudi, Kyle, keep up the great work. Wow. lot to... A lot to chew on here. So yeah. I guess our, our guy's main concern is, did he misread it? And then does he need to do any repair work? I don't think this guy's buying a level anytime soon. Um, Van, you want to start? You want to take, take, first of take all, the lead? Just, just the answer first. Just leave it alone. Just don't. Right. If there's no reason to go in and make things awkward again. Okay? Like, because if that's me, that's going to go bad. Because my thing is, why beg me to come to the sex club, okay? I am ha I have a feeling that this guy paid for all the drinks at the sex club. I have a feeling that there's an admission at the sex club and he was the sex club workhorse. To he, <laughs> he, he bought the towels and all of that. Cause, cause, he was you the know sponsor. I mean? He was the sponsor of the sex club trip because this doesn't make a lot of sense. But there's, there's no reason, honestly, to make this in weird. You took a shot. It didn't work. Fine. Let it go. Unless you're having some kind of issue where you're, you have feelings for her, because it does sound like this is a little bit more than perhaps this is the extra piece to the puzzle of me and my wife. It seems like you like her and you're having a different type of situation with her. And in that case, maybe you feel like you're going to be around her so much you want some clarity on what you guys are. This seems like a what are we situation. But more off, but more even than this, I have such a problem with this individual. I hope that he's 
having a great life. But this is coming from a guy who had his girl sit next to him as he deleted all the porn on his computer. Like, whereas she looked at me and was like, yeah, that one's got to go. 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 It had gone too far. She was against it. Had to take them all off the computer. Wait a minute. Were there ones she said could stay? Are we talking (laughs) files or bookmarks? What are we doing here? Yeah. So this is the deal. All right. These are files. You guys. And you've admitted this this before. You were straight up addicted. Yeah, I have no problem with it. Okay. Yeah, I know. I just. Yeah, 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 it was addicted to porn. And here's the thing. Not in the way that you guys are to where you search different things. I was a curator. I liked to I liked to have it in <laughs> the highest quality. So I wasn't streaming things with a bunch of ads <laughs> popping up. Uh-huh. You know, Brazzers is free, 4th of July. <laughs> I don't like that type of situation. Uh, I like I like to be able to watch it in its purest form. So 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 you're these, the guy, you're the guy when the first comment is name, please. It's like Van oh, X Man. What? What are, yeah, yeah. Without a, without a doubt. Like if you go around if you see any of my who is this in this scene? And then I collect all all is it an avatar stuff. of you? It's actually your face because no one's yeah. like, there's no way it'd actually be him. Right. No, it's not. You know, so it, it, so I have all of this stuff and I'm in a situation to where some of these scenes are <laughs> collectibles, basically, and you can't <laughs> really find them anymore. And I had to get this stuff off my computer. And it was like a, a big deal for me. I'm like, I don't know, man. I've this one has gone from me from computer to computer. I downloaded this scene in 2011, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find it again. You want me or you want your fucking disgusting habit? Get it off there. And I, I go from this to you, who has a freak right. world at his fingertips, and you're fucking around, okay? Like, I don't know that I've ever had less compassion for anybody. This guy is talking about the fact that he's, in love with somebody, basically, that he could have an open relationship with, with his wife, dog. Forget about her. Fuck her. Go on. Move on to the next one. Enjoy Go to that life, club man. the next night. Go to the club the next night by yourself. Trench coat. I don't know. Shades, I just don't know. They, I don't, I don't know if they're... I don't the, think the, dudes, I don't think dudes are like, there's a massive open invite. Be like, hey, solo dude, come on in. Yeah. <laughs> so just, you have just, to, wait, okay, so you have to bring, I don't know how this works because I've never endeavored. It, it seems like something that's awesome. I'm just saying. I would just say this, based on my travels, being by myself all the time, a couple times the door guy's being like, are you fucking kidding? <laughs> And you're like, what? You know, there's a music on? <laughs> Is that Diplo? You're like, dude. You're like, yeah, here's 80 euros. 80 euros? Get the fuck out of here. Anyway, I don't know, back man. To don't, don't. No, but you're you're right. You're I'm derailing dude, the overall I'm point saying, that you're making that's amazing. So sorry. Don't don't fucking like just don't bring it up. There's no reason to bring it up. It's just gonna make things weirder. It always makes things weirder. If she wants to talk about it, talk about it. But uh, those situations where you go, I know I tried to kiss you. It didn't go. Are we cool? That's not, that's a sitcom sort of situation. That's not real life. Don't bring that. Don't, don't bring it up. Just have fun. Eat some kraut or whatever y'all are eating over there (laughs) and, and have a fun time. But dude, go live your life. You are in the chosen few of people here. The rest of us have to be freak like nasty Ethan Hunts of porn espionage. And we in incognito mode. You know what I mean? We, we have to do it when we're on traveling for business and stuff like that. It's all right there for you. And you don't even, you don't even care. It's like you're, you're pissing on my dream. Like go live your life, young man. Be more, be better than this. I'm telling you right now from a 43 year old freak who had to give up the life, the quote unquote life. I had to delete all my names across all the message boards. I have to get off freeones.com. All Cross of that. Crosswire not even around <laughs> anymore, man. God damn it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now some of these things are, they're, they're gone. You know, like uh, Alexis, Texas is my upstairs neighbor. Can't even Oof. be enjoyed. Can't even be enjoyed. Can't tell Kalika how I know who that is. She's a very nice <laughs> lady. Okay. So, so I'm saying right now you have bigger problems than whether or not 
and I'll, and I'll stop after this. He doesn't Whether have bigger not. problems. He has bigger opportunities is what you mean Bigger to say. opportunities. That's right. what I'm trying to say. Am I wrong? Am I just... No, you and know we, we've completely glossed over something. All right, go ahead, Kyle. I just think it seems that. like this guy, when he's saying he's not like that, like he wouldn't have gone to the club by, like, by himself if he was like scanning the crowd. It seems like he might have a thing where like he wants to know the person. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, you know, seeing like a, a, a picture of a naked woman on the internet is not as cool as if somebody that you know sent it to you. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, it's just, it, it's not as, it's not as awesome. I'm just going to, I'll leave that there. Uh, but I think like, I just think maybe he needs to be like, you know, sort of friendly with the person and like needs to like, maybe, maybe that's got something to do with it because like he, he sounds like he's not interested in just casting his line in the, in the waters at these clubs and seeing what comes up. It sounds like he like, the excitement for him is probably somebody that he's been around with in another kind of way before. No, yeah, it's a really good point. He does not want to come off as a sleazeball. Like, is that just it? Like, he doesn't want to come off as this guy. That's I just, think he's you know, annoyed that he feels like he thought he was being invited for this very specific reason, yes. giving us the backstory about the friend. Um, and then she's telling him, you got to go, you got to go, you got to go. And then he gets there, goes in for the kiss. And she's like, no, but then they start making out. He feels like it's a misread signal. What do I need to do? The part that we have not brought back into the conversation is that his wife's gone for a month. And, and apparently it's just on. Uh, I, I don't know where the pamphlets are. I don't know where in Europe this is, but there's just a ton of horny American dudes listening to this right now going like this guy's living back to Van's original point. You're living this kind of life. And maybe it's the actual intimacy dynamic of knowing the friend, knowing this girl for a long time. I don't think anybody should say anything to anybody. It should be laughed about six months from now. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Because I, I, my guess is if your wife was the one that proposed the open relationship thing, but only with other girls, she's busy this camping, this camping trip. <laughs> she's yeah, busy right, right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. I mean, she, she might end up in one of these videos. Look, here's the deal. I like, like, I, I'll, 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 like, I'll say this. Honestly, I think it's probably better to not really approach anything with this particular woman anymore. Because I think he's in too deep. I, I think he's he's given so much thought to this. Losing sleep. Yeah, that, he, that he's he actually probably likes her. And that's probably at cross purposes with having a functional open relationship. I would imagine, and I don't know anything about this, and I never will. Okay. That's but it. It, it. Yeah. Yeah, um, me too, me too. It's probably not going to be go well if you're like super connected you want it to be a little bit more casual with the people you're in your open relationship your outside open relationship situation with right or am i wrong about that are you having people that you're in love with or you really like them no i totally get it you're like hey this is our new insurance salesman this is our new insurance person and <laughs> she's down exactly. sales woman not sales female uh thank you as always devan your time is valuable you share it with us. So thank you. Thanks, Kyle, Steve. Special edition, Summer Life Advice. Ryan Russillo Podcast, Ringer Spotify. Spotify.